live from Nice, France. It's the Cube covering Dot Next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman. Happy to welcome back to our program from the IBM Cognitive Systems Group. We have Bob Picciano and Stephanie Chiris. Uh, Bob, fresh off the keynote uh, speech. Went a little bit long, but uh, glad we can get, get you in. Um, I think when the, when the IBM Power announcement with Nutanix mm -hmm. got out there, a lot of people were trying to put the pieces together and understand. You know, we with the Cube, we've we've been tracking, uh, you know, power for quite a while, <laughs> open power, uh, all the things. Yeah. But I, I, but I have to admit that even myself, it was like, okay, I understand cognitive systems. We got all this AI things right. and everything. But on the stage this morning, you kind of talked a little bit about the chipset and the bandwidth for you know things like GPUs and <laughs> utilization. You know, explain to us. You know, what is resonating with customers, yeah. and you know where. You know, what what's different about this? Because a lot of the other ones, it's like, oh well, you know, software runs a lot of places, and it doesn't matter that much. So, what's important about cognitive systems for? Yeah. Nutanix, so first yeah. off, thanks, Stu, and as always, thanks for uh, you know you you for following us and understanding what we're doing. You mentioned not just power, but you mentioned open power, and yeah, I think yeah. that's important. It shows actually the deeper understanding. You know, we've come a long way in a very short amount of time with what we've done with open power. You know, open power was very much at its core about really making power a natural choice for industry standard Linux, right? The Linuxes that used to run on power a couple of generations ago were more proprietary Linuxes. They were big endian Linux. But open power was about making all that industry standard software run on top of power where we knew our value proposition would shine based on how much optimization we put into our cores and how much optimization we put into IO bandwidth and memory bandwidth. And boy, you know, have we been right. In fact, when we take an industry standard workload like a NoSQL database or an enterprise DB or a MongoDB, Hadoop, and put it on top of Linux, industry standard Linux on top of power, we typically see that run about 2x to 3x better price performance on Linux on power than it would on Linux on Intel. This is a repeating pattern. And so what we're trying to do here is uh, really enable that same efficiency and economics to the Nutanix uh, hyperconverged space. And remember, all these things about insight-based applications, artificial intelligence, are all about data-intensive workloads, data-intensive workloads, and that's what we do best. So we're bringing the best of what we do and the optionality now for these AI workloads and cognitive systems right into the heart of what Nutanix is pivoting to as well, which is really at the, at the core of the enterprise for data-intensive workloads, not just you know, edge-related BDI-based workloads. Stephanie, yeah. you, you want to comment on that a little bit yeah. as well? Yeah, we are so focused on being prioritized in what space we go after in the Linux market around these data-centric and AI workloads. And at the end of the day, you know, Nutanix, as Nutanix states, it's about invisible infrastructure, but the infrastructure underneath matters. And now with the simplicity of what Nutanix brings, you can choose the best infrastructure for the workloads that you decide to run, all with single pane of glass management. So it allows us to bring our capabilities at the infrastructure level for those workloads into a very simple deployment model under a Nutanix private cloud. Yeah, I, I, I think back when you know we had things like when Hadoop came out, and we got all these new modern databases. Right. You know, I wanted to change the infrastructure, but simplicity sure wasn't there. It was if yep. there's a couple of servers sitting mm -hmm. under the desk, okay. But when you needed to scale, when you needed to manage the environment, um, it, it was challenging. Is that we we saw uh, when you know Wikibon for years was doing uh, you know right. research on big data, and it's like uh, you know half a deployment are failing because you know it wasn't what they expected. Right. The performance wasn't there. The cost was challenging. So it, it feels like we're kind of you know turning the corner on a, you know making putting the pieces together to make these solutions work. I, I think we yeah. are. I think uh, Diraj and his his team, Sunil. They've done a wonderful job on making the one-click simplicity, ease of deployment, ease of manageability. We saw today the creation of uh, availability zones, uh, high availability uh, infrastructure, very, very simplistic. So, you know, uh, as you know, I've had other segments with Dave and John in the past, I've always talked about it's not about big data, it's about really creating the ability to get fast, actionable insights. So it's a confluence of that data environment, the process-based workflow environments, and then making that all simple. And this feels like a very natural way to accomplish that. I want to understand, if I, if I caught right, you know, it's not power or x86, but it's really putting the right workloads in, in, in the right place. That's did, right. Did it get that right? That's right. Um, yeah. where, where Heterogeneity the customer is deployments, key. You know, how, do, how do I then manage those environments because, you know, 
I, I want kind of homogeneity uh, of management, even if I have heterogeneity, uh, you know, in, in my environment. You know, how, what, what, are you, what are you hearing from your customers? I think how we've looked at Linux evolve, the set of workloads that are being run, and run on Linux have evolved so dramatically from where they started to running companies and being much more aggressive on compute intensive. So it's about when you bring total cost of ownership, which requires the ability to simply manage your operations in a data center, now the best of Prism, capabilities along with the Acropolis stack allow simplicity of single pane of glass management for you to run your power no set of, of nodes side by side with your x86 set of nodes. So what you want to run on x86 or Windows can now be run seamlessly and compatible with your data centric workloads and data driven workloads or AI workloads on your power nodes. It really is about bringing total cost of ownership down and that really requires accessibility and it requires simplicity of management. And that's what this partnership really brings. It's a new age for hyper-converged. Yeah. What should we be looking for, uh, for for the partnership kind of over the next 12 years, uh, 12, 12, 12 months? <laughs> 12 years. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 12 years might be a little tough to predict, but uh, over the, the, the next year, what, what should we be looking for the partnership? Uh, you know, I think back, you talked about Open Power, Google is a you know, big partner there. Is there a connection? Am I drawing lines between you know, Nutanix and Google? And, and I won't what comment you're doing, on so, that yeah. yet, but, uh, you know, but uh, as you know, we have a big rollout coming up as we're getting ready to launch Power 9. So there'll be more news on some of those fronts uh, as we uh, go through the coming weeks and I hope to see you down in Dallas at our Cloud and Cognitive event or, uh, or out at one of the other events we'll be uh, jointly at uh, where we do some of these announcements. But if you think about where this naturally takes us, uh, Sunil talked about mode one and mode two applications. So what we want to see is increasing that catalog for mode one applications. So things that I'd like to see is an expanded set of relationships around what we both do in the SAP space. I'd like to see that catalog of support uh, enriched for what's out there on top of the Linux on power space, uh, where we know our value proposition will continue to be demonstrated, both in uh, total cost of acquisition as well as total cost yeah. of ownership. I mean, we're really you know, seeing some great results on our, on our Linux base. As you know, it's now about 20% of the power revenue bases from Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's grown from a very small amount just a few years ago. Um, so I look to see that. Uh, and then I, I would look at uh, more heterogeneity in terms of the support of what we do both in Linux and maybe in the future also what we do to support the AIX workloads uh, with Nutanix as well. Because I do think our clients are asking about that optionality. They have big investments, mission critical workloads around AIX and they want to start to bring those worlds together. Mm -hmm. All right, Stephanie, I want, want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, th 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 anything kind of learnings that you've had of the relationships as you've been getting out and getting into those customer environments? I have to say the excitement coming in from the sales team, from our clients, and from the business partners have been incredible. It really is about the coming together of not only two spaces of simple and absolutely the best infrastructure and being able to optimize from bottom to top, but it's about taking hyper-converged to a new set of workloads, a new space, um, so the excitement is just incredible. I, uh, I'm thrilled to be here at Dot Next and be able to talk to our clients and partners about it. All right, well Stephanie and Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Stu. Sorry we had to do a short thank segment, you, but we'll be catching you up at many more. All right, so we'll be back with lots more coverage here from Nutanix.next in Nice, France. I'm Stu Miniman, you're watching theCUBE.